Hi, this is Miriam Rose with testoftanzania.com. Today's recipe is chapati. Uh, many of you have requested you wanted to do have a chapati recipe from scratch because I have a video on YouTube that only shows how to cook on the stove top. So finally I've decided to do that. Also there's good news. The good news is that the book is done. But I'm very, very, very happy and you can tell that I'm happy today. Uh, because uh, the book is ready so this recipe is also in the book but I know many people are having a hard time with chapati now first I need to tell you that chapati East African chapati is totally different from Indian chapati when I say East Africa includes countries like Kenya Uganda Tanzania Burundi Rwanda Somali Congo or some parts of Malawi Mozambique we all eat chapati is our favorite and uh, even if we borrow the recipe from India, but it's totally different. I know some of you in my other YouTube video, you've been saying, no, 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 this is Parathi. We don't use oil. No, 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 no. In East Africa, our chapati, we use oil. We, fall, we borrowed uh, a version of chapati from India, and then we changed it to our own test because African te uh, test is totally different from the Indian test. So please, this is chapati from East Africa, not chapati from India. Okay, now, today I'm going to use a half recipe because um, in the book or in the, um, on the website, I have five cups, five to six cups. So today we're going to use two and a half cups of flour. So let's start measuring. And you use measuring cups for those who are in Africa. I know you use mugs or cups that you use for your tea. And then you complain your recipe is not coming well. It's because you need to use a measuring cup. And this is one cup. So we're going to do two cups first. And don't fill it up like this. Just flat. One cup. And two cups. And then... We're going to use our half cup to measure half a cup. There. It's very, very easy. And then, since uh, we're using half the recipe, we're going to use half a cup of water. And for uh, salt, we're going to use about uh, first... This is a half teaspoon of salt and maybe a quarter teaspoon of salt. You know, mix well. It's very easy. This is a very easy recipe. There. And then, now, this is the part that I know it confused people from the Indian chapati. We do use oil in Africa. So... We put, I usually use one uh, tablespoon uh, for half um, ingredients. If you're using five cups, you use two to three tablespoons of oil. Now it's time to get messy. Okay, you mix this with your hand. Now, if you want to use a machine, you can use a machine to mix this. If you're using your hands, it's easy. I prefer using my hand, even if I do have a machine where I can use it. Now we've put one cup, as you see, it's getting harder. So we're gonna add at least uh, a quarter cup of water. Always add water. I know in the recipe I'm saying maybe two cups of water or three cups of water. Just don't follow exactly because you are the one who is in the kitchen. Maybe your flour texture is totally different and it may need more water than mine. So add the water. Make sure it's very, very soft. You know, very, very soft. So we're just going to mix here. We'll soon put it on our counter and knead. 
Oh, it's very messy, as you can see. Nobody likes this. I normally use gloves when I'm at home by myself, but I will not use gloves today. <laughs> okay. There. Now, once you do it this way, here is the, th the trick. I'm just going to use this, whatever is it for, just to remove these things in my hand. Once you mix like this, you can cover it before you continue to make the dough. Put it aside for like five minutes. You know, this will help the gluten to just uh, relax a little bit by itself so that when you come to knead, it's going to be very easy and it's not going to be as sticky because the gluten is the problem. People don't knead their dough very well when they're making chapati and then um, your chapati won't come out nice, believe me. So we're going to set it aside for like three minutes and then we come back and continue okay now we're gonna put some little flour and put it this make sure your counter is very very clean see I wash mine first with bleach and then with a soap dish all otherwise use a board something now you see, it's kind of sticking, so we want to add a little bit of flour. Just mix like this for this time. You see, it's very soft. The reason I did it very soft, because as we are kneading, we are going to put, to add a lot, some flour. You see, if it's very hard from the beginning, you, you know, you're going to end up with a very, very hard dough. Not always, no, add. As we are doing this, about the flour type. You ha I said you're using all purpose flour because I'm, in, I'm videotaping this from United States. United States all-purpose flour is the flour that can be used for cakes, for bread, for everything. It's no, there's no speci specialization. Um, don't, I try to use bread flour, but for some reason, I didn't like the flavor. So you can use any flour that you're used to, but uh, all-purpose flour is the best. And um, I don't know for other countries, all-purpose flour like India may mean a totally a different kind of flour. I've noticed that from the video from YouTube. But um, for America, all-purpose flour is regular wheat flour. You can use brown flour for health reason, but believe me, it will not taste the same. So if you're doing this for the first time, I will ask you to use just regular white flour, uh, wheat, regular wi wheat white flour. Once you're used to make this, then you can use another type of flour. Okay, now here is the trick now. See it's soft? Now it's not sticking as much on my hands. Now to knee, use this part of your hand. Okay? I, some, I, sometimes I do this, but if the dough is very hard, you may hurt your thumb because I've done that before. It happened to me a couple of years ago when I was still learning uh, to cook. Uh, but using this part, it helps a lot. So, you're still adding flour there. Now, you see, you do like this, you go. See, like this. The fun is just beginning. This is how you knead your flour. You, you do like this, like this, like this, like this. It's not hard at all. It's not hard. And you do it faster because so that it won't stick so much and it won't stick um, on the counter. See, when you do faster, one hand, two, then this, this. If you do like this, it's, it's good too, you know, but it doesn't, uh, you know, you don't knee very well. Another trick now, you're going to do this for 10 to 15 minutes non-stop. Yes, you just don't do it for five minutes and expect you're going to have a nice dough. The reason we do it longer because we want to activate the gluten. No, the gluten help the, f the dough to be elastic. And if it's elastic, then your chapati is going to cook very well. 
just like bread, only we don't use yeast. So you just do like this. See, it's not hard. And now, feel free to just, we want to make sure to activate the gluten faster. Just do this. You're allowed to do this. It's fun. See, it works better. It's sticking on the floor. Let's add the flour. And if this is not enough, you're allowed to use your hands and do like this. It, uh, you activate the gluten quickly. I do this. If you're lazy, this is a good job for your kids. Get them, wash your hands, put for them here. They're going to do this for you in 15 minutes. It's ready. You didn't even sweat and the kids are happy. So you're going to do this just like this. Do like this after a few minutes. You know, beat it like this. So you keep going for 15 good minutes. 10 to 15. Normally I use 10, but 15 it's 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 better. Okay? Okay, our 15 minutes are almost done. You see? See, it's very nice, it's smooth, it's not even sticking. Now See, it's elastic. That's all we need. It's elastic. That's all we need. It's very smooth. So if you have your flour like this, you can use the machine. When I use machine, you can use for 12 minutes. But for unknown reason, I'm never satisfied. I always have to put it here and do this again. That's when I'm happy. Okay, so we are done. To knee. Now, after you knee like this, you can put make it you know nice round put it in a container if you want somewhere cover it with a plastic in a room temperature leave it for like 10 15 minutes so that you know uh the the gluten will re relax some more just sit back and you know it relax and it it makes even the flour softer and easier to cut now we going to make only four to five chapati today it depends if you want uh, more chapati you can make they become thinner but i like my chapati to be to look healthy so we're not gonna make very thin chapati uh, i'm gonna divide this into four so here is half here is four equal parts. Of course, one may be a little bit smaller than the other, but it's okay. After you cook, nobody will know the difference. Okay. Now, the next part is uh, you have two choices now. If you want, you can take this one piece and um, knead to a round and then you cook right away. Then you have a chapati. Many people in other East, uh, countries around East Africa, that's how they do. That's the end. You have your chapati ready. Just knead to a flat round. If you're in the US, it's like pita bread, you know, the Spanish pita bread. But in Tanzania, we like it to take a longer uh, uh, um, version of this, which is to create layers. Now, to create, in order to create layers, we're going to do this next part. So we are going to make this just a small circle. It doesn't even have to be a, uh, a sack, perfect one. It can be in square, whatever. It's soft. And see, it's very ugly looking, but don't worry. Who cares? We are not going to cook it right now. Because it's very soft, so you know, once it stretches, it goes back to become a small one. 
Yeah, making chapati is a very good exercise for those lazy ones. That's why many people, they rather buy chapati than making them at home. I used to be one of them. Okay, now, this is, we are, start, we are brushing the oil now. You don't have to do this part if you're very concerned about oil. The good thing of uh, Tanzanian cooking, you can cook in, in t everything in two different ways. If you're concerned about oil, as I said, we love oil. So right now, you're brushing. I love these brushes, actually. You can use them on the stove. We brush everywhere nicely. And this is to help us to have layers, you know. When I was a kid, I remember my mom was like, ah, you eat chapati, and then they would just cut it in the middle. If it doesn't have layers, they will put it aside and say, she, does, she can cook. <laughs> so you, if you are inviting a Tanzania in your house and you're making chapati, make sure it have layers so that they can believe you can cook. So, and then making it, roll it to like this to a rope. It's just easy. No? Just expand. There. And then make to a coil. It's easy. It's just like this. We put it there. Then we do another one until we finish all of them. That's why you're not supposed to be in a hurry when making chapati. And it depends on speed. Some people are very fast. So I'm going to do this until I finish the other three. So I'll get back to you. Once I'm done with the rest. There. Now we're done. So a few minutes have passed now. So this is very soft. Now the next part we're going to roll and cook. Okay. See we have here for chapati. This is we use two and a half cups of flour. We can make, you can have six or eight, make them thinner. But as I say, I like healthy looking chapati. Okay, now let me set up the stove here so that we can continue. Okay, welcome back. Now we have everything ready. We are starting to cook. Um, okay, don't do this at home, okay? <laughs> I'm used to it. Uh, I can tell, you know, just by doing this quickly. But for you, just drop a little bit of water. Yeah, this is good enough. If you want, you can make it hotter. Now, if, um, when I use my gas stove behind me, I usually use the middle settings. I find this one is very, very hot. So um, I'm using almost to uh, minimum settings. As I say, the trick of making a nice chapati don't go more than three minutes um, for one chapati because otherwise you're gonna have, you're gonna be overcooked or something. And it's gonna be very, very hard. So that, that I know some people are like, why three minutes is like scientific? Or, or, no, this is the time of cooking. You cook it longer, you dry it. You cook it less time, it may not cook well. So set your stove that you may not use. At least I said uh, three to four minutes. But if you go less than three, that's good. So we're gonna, now this is the time now you need to work this and make a nice shape, round shape, you see? Slowly, not in a hurry. We need a very nice, this is ticking down. I wonder why. Okay, let me add more flour. Wow, too much flouring, but I'm glad it's very soft. So I don't have to worry for this to get harder. See, move side by side. If you just go on on one side only, you're gonna have a square chapati, which is not bad if you're just cooking for yourself at home. But if you're serving a Tanzanian, you don't wanna serve them a square chapati. Now, the bigger I will make, the thinner it's gonna be. 
as I said, I like healthy looking chapati. Now remember we made a coil like this, you know, this is to create layers. Now inside when we cook it, we're gonna have layers. Now it's hot enough, wow, the steam is coming out, that's very hot. So don't put oil in this one, just put it like that. Okay, we're starting to have bubbles. It depends how much oil you've used to brush inside when you're making an oil, the coil. Sometimes the bubble can just expand up, you know, sometimes just little parts like here. It's all well, it's all the same thing, it's all good because you know that the steam is going inside the chapati. It's all good. Now you can use um, this brush. It's, um, this use more oil than this one. You use less oil if you brush using this with small, small, um, whatever there. Okay, here. So I'm gonna use this other one this time. Let's brush faster. You see, you can notice that very little oil is in use here and it's expanding very well. See, very little oil. So I can just turn it using my hand, I'm used to it. And brush it. Okay. When you turn it over the other side, it usually doesn't take long at all because it's already cooked. You remember when you're waiting to be translucent, it was cooking already. So basically you just turn it over to be brown a little bit, to cook a little bit and the oil to go through. Basically it's almost done. See, this is perfect now. You see, it's like sponge. It's like sponge. That's what we want the chapati to be. Okay? We are ready. Now we are finished, so you can go on and finish the rest. I think this will already help you to know how to make chapati. I hope I will, uh, there will be no more questions and uh, confusion of Indian chapati uh, or Indian parathi. I don't know. I've never seen Indian parathi and I don't know it. I only learned that from my YouTube video where people are complaining that's parathi. No. So this is East African chapati where it's prepared into several countries in East Africa, which include um, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda, Mozambique, Zambia, Congo. They all make chapati. Now, you can have your chapati with uh, any sauces. I have meat sauces on my on YouTube. And uh, vegetables you mix together or you can have for breakfast. Now, last I wanna show you why we did the coil. Here we have our chapati that we cooked earlier. See, we did the coil four layers. You see I'm cutting the middle, it's in layers. You see how it is? You can just divide it, the layers, by itself. You see? It's many, many layers. This is how a Swahili will tell you now, oh yes, she can cook chapati. If it's not like this, mm -mm 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 -mm, you need to try again. Okay? So I'm very proud myself to be from a country that's uh, Swahili speaking and the culture. So this, you see, it's layer, layer. This is beautiful chapati. So that's the reason we did the coil. But as I said, you can skip the coil. Just roll it and cook the chapati. It will never be like this. So I hope you enjoy chapati. Please try it. This is for your breakfast instead of bread or for your lunch or for your dinner or just for snacks. And kids love this. Believe me, there is no kid from any part of the world who is gone, who's not going to like this. Okay, thank you. Welcome again. This is Miriam Rose with testoftanzania.com. For more recipes, please visit my website.